Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, my name is Abhi. Uh, I'm the designer and writer of Venba. Uh, and this is my talk, I'm calling it Lore Don't Tell, uh, a guide for telling culturally rooted stories. So what is Venba? Venba is a narrative cooking game where you play as a immigrant Indian mother who moves to Canada in the late 1980s with her family. In her travel to Canada, her recipe book gets damaged, so as a result, players have to cook various South Indian dishes to restore these lost recipes while also exploring this family story. The game explores the relationships within a family and how it grows and changes over time, but it does that through the lens of food. <clears throat> the problem I see a lot is that showcasing a culture in media can be very challenging, especially if it's a culture that uh, an international audience isn't necessarily familiar with. Uh, if it's a culture that's familiar, you can just focus on telling the story, but when it's not, you feel a need to tell not just a story, but also educate uh, in the ways of the culture in addition to telling the story. You almost want to set up the context so that players can understand the story you're telling. Uh, but ironically, I find that this leads to worse storytelling. Um, the story and plot now serve two purposes. Not only does it have to do justice to the characters, it also has to educate. And anytime you could do that, you could be telling the story instead. So the solution to this problem already exists. It's what we call lore. Uh, with Venba, I got a lot of praise for how it portrayed the culture in a very unassuming way. Someone said Venba just exists. It doesn't say or do what it is. Uh, it just presents itself, right? And people asked a lot of uh, questions about like how I wasn't worried about uh, the specific, hyper-specific details that I showed about players missing those details, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And when I was trying to explain why it felt right for me to tell the story in this way um, and uh, add these details in this way, I realized I was essentially describing uh, what we all understand to be lore. Uh, in most media, there's plot and there's lore, right? Um, plot is told to the player, but lore exists for the player to discover. Um, in fantasy settings, we are often thrust into worlds and cultures that are drastically different from ours. But in those settings, not everything is explained to the player. Often, things are left uh, unsaid. The author alone might know these details to flesh out the world, but they heavily leverage the lore uh, to do it instead of using the plot. So why should real-world cultures be any different? Before I start going into specific examples, I want to address one thing. I think when we try to tell culturally rooted stories, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves um, to make sure we capture all of it, right? And I definitely understand uh, this responsibility. I think this also causes an insecurity in us because we know that uh, to tell this, uh, this culture is not something people might be familiar with. Uh, but I think we need to let go of that insecurity. My favorite uh, Tamil movie director, uh, Vetri Marnan, would often say, the more local you are, the more international you become. Um, so to me, that means tell a very hyper-specific story, and somehow it feels more universal that way. Um, and the strength of the stories we tell is that it's different uh, and unique, and we shouldn't dumb it down and risk losing that. Um, let me start by going into specific examples. Um, so one thing I see uh, is that a lot of times we, in, in an eagerness um, to communicate to the player, we start treating the familiar as unfamiliar. Um, what I mean by that is that if we want the players to engage with our world and the things in our world and as if they are familiar cornerstones, we have to treat it as familiar first. So when a player is thrust into the world of Venba, they may or not may not be familiar with Tamar culture and Tamar cuisine, but Venba and Pavlin are experts, right? Uh, and there's a dissonance here between the knowledge of the players and the knowledge of the characters. But if I write the game uh, in a way that the characters explain the different aspects of the culture, then these cu characters themselves are acting as if the culture is something that needs to be explained. Um, I never talk about uh, idli or dosa in a way that, oh, it's a fermented rice batter, uh, that rice, you know, like I don't talk about it that way. I just say idli and dosa, right? Because I know what it is. Um, but if I try to account for players who don't, uh, Benba and Pavlin are starting to act like they don't know what idli and dosa is. Um, so instead, I think it's better to lean into the dissonance instead. Aggressively don't explain anything, uh, and um, don't explain anything that these characters normally wouldn't. If this is not a conversation that they would normally have, then uh, don't bother. And I think this actually creates a feeling that these characters aren't here for the player or in service of the player. They're here regardless, and the player is just here along for the journey. Um, there is one level in Venba where uh, Venba 
cooks a variety of dishes, uh, uh, like a marathon. Um, and I don't tell the players what the name of these dishes are in English. Um, so a lot of times during playtesting, players are like, these dishes look so good, I want to cook them. Uh, what are they called, right? And this is the co most common feedback I got for this particular level. Um, the feeling I wanted to recreate in this level is uh, when by creating uh, dish after dish after dish, right? So uh, it's complete contrast to the other dish, other levels where there's only one dish you create. Um, so the way to address that feedback is some people said, why don't you put a title um, so at, at top of the dish when the final thing is presented so players know what they're cooking? And this is a completely valid ask, and we almost considered it. Uh, but then it struck me, how absurd would it be if I showed pizza and large letters showed up saying pizza, right? Um, so here, game, the game itself, from the UI itself, it's trying to acknowledge that uh, if I showed those titles, that these dishes are not something uh, you should be familiar with. Instead, if you go the other way, yes, it leads to some player frustration, but uh, it at least uh, cements the fact that these are uh, the bread and butter for Venba and Pavlin. Um, and just like how it's important to familiarize, uh, keep familiar things familiar, you can do the opposite to reinforce what is unfamiliar for these characters. Um, so when Venba speaks in Tamar, the default text color is white. Um, and throughout the game, uh, that's how it remains. But when a character speaks in English, the text color changes. Um, this treats speaking English as a special occurrence, uh, which makes sense for these characters. And it's not something normal to the players, right? But by default, uh, when one of the members were, was implementing the language tags, um, by default, it would be English, and you'd have to tag it to make it dumber. Um, so that also led to the different uh, colors, right? But I had to reverse that very consciously. Because it, it makes sense for all of us growing up here, the English does feel like the default, but you have to make sure that that doesn't bleed into the game itself. Um, the other thing um, I want to bring up is um, wh where does all of this stem from? Um, I think it stems from an eagerness for the game to be uh, a good representation, but often it leads into it trying to be representative. The responsibilities of showing a culture when it's not been showcased before, it's very much present. However, there's like a million things to consider. So it feels like whenever you show one aspect of your culture, you're not showing another aspect of your culture. And trying to cater to all of the aspects will leave you spread too thin. And it's important to remember that we are a representation. We are not the representation. Um, but you might be seen as the representation by the players. But that's a problem of not enough pieces like uh, Venba or other games existing. But if you do try to be representative, uh, it leads to the game feeling more like a tour guide than, than a story that you're saying. Um, this line can actually get really, really blurry when you're in production. So uh, with Venba, I knew that a lot of the players were interested in it for the story. But I also knew that a lot more players were interested in it because it's about South Indian food, and they were really excited about it. Um, so a lot of the feature requests that we got were things like, can we uh, understand what these dishes are, can we get trivia about them, can we get facts, can we get their recipes, and all these things, right? Um, and these are very, very reasonable uh, asks. Um, and um, I felt the need to cater to them a bit. And catering to these things might seem innocent enough. And in fact, it makes the game much more commercially viable if we say that, oh, play Venba to learn how to cook. Um, but I specifically was very careful about avoiding um, this. And whenever people ask, can we uh, play Venba to learn how to cook, I would just say, no, I don't think that's possible. Like The recipes are accurate, but um, I intentionally designed uh, the gameplay in a way that um, it only gives them the spirit of the dish um, and gives them a nice idea about what are the challenges in the dish, but um, they can't walk away with a complete understanding of the dish itself. Um, and you have to be specifically, specifically careful about this when working with publishers. Uh, or merchandising, because these are the aspects that appeals to them, and these are the things that they might push for. Uh, but you're not creating a product, you're trying to tell a story. Um, so instead, uh, what I did was, the thing is that I'm also very, very passionate about uh, South Indian food, and I do like to tell people, oh, Italy is made of three days rice fermented batter and things like that, right? And similarly, Benba is also very passionate. So I, I was able to find uh, organic ways of um, when by geeking out about food and treating that as the way to give the players more insight and more trivia about the recipe. 
Um, so there are ways to find, uh, find it. It just has to be more subtle. Um, if you're not giving players uh, these things, but what, what you can do is inspire them to seek more for themselves, uh, especially when it's a real world culture. Um, so for example, this uh, is how every level in the game starts uh, by showing this calendar and there's a small proverb. Um, I never explain what these proverbs are called, what these collections of proverbs are called, uh, why are they here. Um, I don't explain any of these things. But the thing is that proverb, uh, it's actually called a Venba. Um, and Venba is named after these poems. Um, so th there is a question of, is this game named after these poems or after the main character? And even though it's so subtle like this, I saw so many people um, looking up these proverbs, trying to find out where they're from. Uh, people found like Tamar subreddits and they were like, oh, can you translate this for me? Where can I read more of this, right? And um, that just comes from them attaching, uh, like getting the meaning from this and being inspired to go look for it themselves. Um, it, this kind of thing happened uh, in every aspect of the game. There's a Spotify play, there's many Spotify playlists where people are finding Venba like music uh, to make for themselves. Um, and this is important because these gaps are important for us to leave. If I uh, made a playlist, then it becomes much more authoritative um, and it becomes the one source, right? And if I make a guide for go look at these things, um, it, it mutes that discussion. But when players have questions, it actually generates more discussion. Um, so I think it's really, it's actually effective to leave these gaps. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, that's essentially, yeah, so when you uh, capture these things, it's, you give little snippets, you leave a little bread trail, and you try to arm the player with enough information that they can go up and look for those things themselves. But what you can do is convey how passionate you are about these things. Get them as excited as you are about that. Uh, and you can do that either with the framing, so with the food, like it was really important for me to make it look really delicious and um, you know sound really good and all of that because Whenever I cook, I, I know which part of the recipe step I get excited about, right? So uh, visually, it was very easy to push for that. Um, so, and similarly, the characters in Venba are also deeply passionate about Tamar culture. Um, so just seeing that passion is infectious, and that's what uh, leaves a lasting impression on the player. So players might not always uh, see lore, but they'll definitely feel it. Um, and I'll give you some examples of that. Um, Every level in Venba also starts with this photo wall, right? And on the left side, you'll see a photo frame of Venba's, Venba and her parents. And on the right side, you see more modern day photos of uh, her family in Canada. Um, so I really, really like that I did this because uh, photos in India, especially back in the day, they, people just took them and they would uh, you know, cut them out out of uh, pictures. They weren't really made to any standard sizes. Um, so it's very clear to me that Venba brought pictures of her family uh, from India to Canada. There's no frames that fit in, so she's you know, put two photos in and made a frame out of it. Um, and as the photos took in Canada, they come for a very specific frame size, right? Um, for a lot of Indian players, when they see this, they're like, yeah, I absolutely have a photo like this in my home. They immediately catch that. But players who are not necessarily from the same culture, they still get this same feeling. I don't, I don't have to explain all of these things. Uh, they're able to connect, connect the gaps. Um, and this gives so much personality. Uh, and like, if I shy away from showing something like that because players wouldn't understand it, um, they wouldn't be thinking about it in this way. And if I did explain it, it would be boring. So um, I think this is a really nice line to walk. Um, so another thing I did that was very subtle is once again bringing back this example between English and Tamar is that uh, something that really bothers me about diaspora media um, is when people write dialogues in English um, and there's a very uh, first generation immigrant speaking, um, I can tell when it was written by an assimilated person and not an assimilated person because uh, sentence structures change when your language changes. Your thoughts change when your language changes. Um, so if you write in English from the get-go, Venba is speaking English. So to avoid that, I actually wrote all the Tamil dialogues in Tamil first and then I translated them into English. This might seem like a lot of effort, but uh, language is thoughts, right? Like sometimes I have to consciously switch in which language I'm thinking to flesh out that thought better. Um, so it was much easier to capture that authenticity if uh, the dialogues were written in Tamil first. And similarly for uh, Kevin, who's more assimilated, uh, 
he would translate English from his head into Tamil, right? So the opposite process happened. Um, and I, I don't know if players noticed this specifically, but recently when I was talking to somebody, they said, um, when, but even though she spoke English, even though the game is unlocalized, it felt like she was speaking Tamil. Um, and b she was able to recognize that very consciously because she's Tamil, but I think every player still feels the same feeling. Um, there, like all these feelings add up, right, um, into fleshing out this world. It might just not be that explicit. So if culture is lore, we should also make peace with the fact that lore is meant to be missable. Um, a core essence of f fleshing out a world is giving the players a feeling that they don't fully understand this world yet. Uh, and there's parts that they haven't seen yet. Uh, there's a lot of details and subtext that I've crammed into Venpa, but that by definition means players won't see everything. They won't, they'll miss some things, uh, they won't connect things individually. But this means more to the players that don't miss it, right? Because they're able to connect it because they have had a certain similar experience or maybe they're from that culture. But even for the players that do miss it, this gap actually creates a lot of depth. Um, so I'm really wary about filling the gap just because people miss it. So in the spoilers, in the fifth level, um, um, Benba's husband, Pavlin, passes away. And the way I communicate that is by a single shot of uh, Pavlin's uh, photo uh, and his glasses and, and the book because he's a writer. Um, culturally, um, this is a big difference between the West uh, and uh, South India specifically. Um, we don't hang photos, or we don't use to hang photos of ourselves unless a person passes away. Um, and especially when it's framed this way, uh, as a singular photo of him, uh, people who saw that in this black and white, they immediately got, if they're from Tamil Nadu, they immediately got that, oh, Pavlin passed away. Um, but for a lot of other players, they didn't get that um, until maybe the level ended, or maybe even after when they see Coven wearing Pavlin's classes. Um, and this might seem like a issue to address and to make it more explicit, but it's not the worst thing if they don't connect the dots immediately, right? If you let the question linger in their head, that actually creates a lot of interest. Like if they're playing the game thinking, wait, what happened to that? What happened to that? And then they finally find out, they're more engaged also. So it's not absolutely the worst thing. Um, and, uh, and then they're like, okay, so that photo then retroactively they can make, uh, make the connection. And when you make connections like that, you really learn uh, the culture, you really feel the culture. Um, we might all feel this when we go to different countries or different cultures. Um, we just observe certain things that are different, and we don't, we're not quite sure why they're different, and then we'll understand it slowly. So playing Venba essentially gives that same experience. Um, there's also, okay, I know I said lore is meant to be missable and all of that, but I'm just gonna go through uh, some details that I'm a little annoyed that not enough people noticed. So. <laughs> Um, so this one is when they revealed the Puttu scene, and I really love it, uh, but it's a direct reference um, to this movie, uh, and even though <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have to have seen this movie, uh, like the comedy of the scene uh, is captured here. Um, and similarly, um, the, um, the dad, Pavlin, is, uh, very, has a very striking resemblance to one of my favorite actors, uh, so much so that from the beginning that's been the, the reference. Um, and then here, Venba is cooking biryani, uh, which is one of the most complicated recipes, but Venba is such a good cook, her confidence comes through just in the way the, the dishes and utensils come in, right? Um, she, she's excited to cook, and therefore the player is excited to cook. And when she pours the oil, uh, she's just, she's just um, you know, shotgunning it, right? But when Coven cooks for the first time, it's a very different animation, right? Things stumble around, and he's not confident about how much oil to pour and stuff like that. It's very tiny, um, but all of these things really add a lot of personality. Um, and finally, this might be the most subtle one, um, in, um, in one of the levels where you cook with ghee in Canada, uh, you, the ghee is semi-solid, and you put it into the pan, and then it melts. But when you cook with ghee in India, because the room temperature is higher, it's already melted to start with. Um, and when I asked my uh, team, they're like, oh, we already have a ghee acid. I'm like, no, it needs to be liquid. They're like, no one's gonna notice, but it's important for, <laughs> it's important for me. Um, so a lot of these details might feel very self-indulgent, uh, and it is. All these movie references and everything is very, very self-indulgent for me, but it makes it so much more worth it when even one person notices. And the main point is that 
even if other people don't notice it, they will feel it. They will feel that when we're stacked with details and there's this world that they haven't quite discovered yet. Um, every opportunity, every, I know, I know indie developers sometimes groan at achievements, but for me, achievements were just so liberating because they were just this window of places where I can cram even more references, even more details, um, and uh, showcase what are the things I like uh, about my culture. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's how I approached Venba. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I definitely understand that we all feel the need to um, make sure that players understand what's cool about our culture well, and make sure that we convey what's, um, what we find uh, interesting and do it properly. But if we let go of that a bit and um, we make peace with the fact that um, some players might miss it, I think it does make for a better product. Um, thank you so much. Oh, we can do questions if anybody wants to do questions. Um, if not, um, please be, uh, please remember to fill out your evaluation forms. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Yusun Chung from uh, Electronic Arts. I I really enjoyed this uh, talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I really like the visual, and I really like the use of color. Yeah. And, and and yeah, I I think the food. I I can't wait to go to the game and start making those myself. <laughs> awesome. um, which platform is this game available? Also, um, the Canada was referred in the presentation. Are you, did you make it in Canada? Yeah, so and I came to Canada when I was uh, 12, um, and Venbo was inspired by a lot of the families um, I saw in Canada. Uh, we're out on pretty much every platform, uh, PC, Switch, PS5, Xbox. We're also on a massive sale right now. So. <laughs> awesome. I'm buying it tonight. Um, did you get any feedback from um, Indian audiences, yeah. uh, whether in yeah. Canada or in India? Yeah, so one thing I was super worried about is um, my friends back, uh, back home will roast the shit out of diaspora media. They're, and I was like, oh no, uh, I hope that doesn't happen uh, with Venba. But um, thankfully, like, I think I was really committed to keeping things very authentic and uh, important, so much so that uh, in the biryani level, one of the things that most players struggle with, uh, there's, a, there's a live stream of uh, um, one of the streamers, a Tamil streamer playing it with his mom, and she didn't even look at the recipe. She was just like, yeah, go do this, go do that. Like, and the fact that her instincts were like right in the game, uh, I think uh, is really good. So uh, they're all really happy with it, and uh, that's something I'm very grateful for. Hi, um, I have been, I've played Venba actually a while ago. I've been following it for a few years now, actually, because I, um, I, one of my research areas as a professor of game design is um, yeah. food and games. So yeah. oh, nice. very relevant. Um, and one of the questions that I had for you was how did you approach the design of the cooking itself? And then a follow up to that would be how did you balance the story elements with the cooking levels? What was, what, how did you figure out what was a good balance between those two? Yeah, um, so for me, uh, that was a really, really hard problem to figure out because uh, Indian recipes are very, very complicated. Uh, like the ingredient, ingredient list itself is like, uh, like even compositionally putting all the ingredients in a table is overwhelming for the players. Uh, but I think once I let go of the idea, once again, that um, oh, I have to show, oh, if it's a tamar food, then I have to show all the staples. I have to show all these things, right? Um, instead, I was able to focus on what I think make for cool recipes. Um, so I didn't crack it until I made idli into a puzzle. Um, and idli has like uh, these plates and these um, ways you rotate and place them. And it felt like a physical uh, turn the object around kind of game. So that became much easier uh, to start making. So I started to find puzzles within the recipes themselves. Uh, they're simpler, but um, I think they were more fun to solve. Um, and I also tried to keep in mind like which dishes does it make sense for the family to cook. So in the 1980s, making something like biryani would be very expensive uh, because those speciality spices are really hard to come by. But in the 2006, the explosion of the immigration community in Toronto makes those things more possible, right? So it nicely aligned with the recipes are getting more difficult and complex, but it's also because Venba can now actually cook these uh, dishes. Yeah. Thank you.
Uh, so yeah, hi Abhi. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. Yeah. And uh, as a Tamilan, big congratulations for the oh. IGF awards yesterday. Thank you. I was thank screaming you. my lungs out. <laughs> you may thank have heard you. me. Thank you. Uh, so my question is that around the world there are a lot of local games made by local devs for local audiences, but we see that these are not as popular in the West, especially like games from Iran, from India. Um, whereas Venba is something that, as you mentioned, instantly kind of appealed to the global audience in a way that other games haven't. Mm. So if you didn't try to do this consciously, then you know, why did it work? What's your opinion on how it... Yeah, um, I think a lot of it is in, uh, we were in the right place, right time. Um, also, being in Canada, being in uh, so close to a game dev scene comes with massive, massive privileges. Um, so I don't think, I think if I didn't make Venba, it's a matter of time before someone else did. Um, and uh, yeah, I think right now uh, the India game dev scene is exploding, um, and I can't wait till um, so many more cooking games come out that when Bob becomes irrelevant, uh, I'll be able to <laughs> breathe freely. Then I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you so much for the talk. It was so incredible. I particularly loved how uh, you had the two different assets for the gi, the solid and the liquid. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, how did you negotiate that uh, with the extra <laughs> asset with the temp team? Yeah, uh, you know, my, my producer is sitting in the front row. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think what I really like about working with my team is that um, they will first understand what I'm going for. Um, if I am able to convey why it's important to me, they'll be like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll do it. Um, but it's just about finding um, like the way to do it. It's a lot of compromises, a lot of compromises for sure. Um, we can keep adding details, right? Uh, but uh, those, like, those uh, kind of small details go a long way. So it becomes a big uh, compromise thing. Uh, I'm really bad at scope, scoping and all of those things. So um, I will, I'll keep putting ideas on the board and uh, my team will um, you know, ruthlessly cut it, and sometimes we get into debates and stuff like that. But I think that's when, uh, that's when, the, that's how the game is made. Yeah. My follow-up is: uh, Is there anything that was cut for scope that you still wish could have made it? Yeah. Um, so initially, I wanted way more levels <laughs> to begin with, so that cut down to seven. Um, and I think um, things like. Uh, I wanted the player to have the feel, like once you cook idli, it's stuck, especially if you use a cloth. It's very satisfying when you peel that idli off the cloth. Very, very satisfying. And I wanted the player to be able to do that physically. Uh, but I also suggested this idea after we had already passed certification and we had a month. <laughs> um, so yeah, like there's so many things like that. I made an entire document. Um, like after we passed cert, we're like, okay, we had three weeks for day one patch. Um, my lead programmer made, uh, here's some bugs and polishes that we have to do. My producer made an even smaller list. I wrote entire features and story <laughs> arcs um, that they ruthlessly shot down as they should. Yeah. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how you went about um, Canadian culture. Mm -hmm. Was there anything you wanted to highlight from there or did you kind of want to undersell that to highlight the Indian culture? Yeah, uh, so I think this goes back to the original question of like, if Venba is about something, what is what is it not about, right? Um, so you're absolutely right, like that is something I struggled with also. Uh, there's so much in Canada that I love and um, wanna show too, um, but I think uh, by focusing just on uh, Venba and Pavlin, uh, I think a lot of immigrants, especially who come in the 80s, um, they don't assimilate ever, right? So they live in a cocoon kind of mm. thing. So um, it actually benefited the game to not show so much of Canada, uh, and the entire game happens inside the home for most of it. Um, and that was uh, intentional so that when Menba finally goes back to India, that's when we show that they're sitting out in the open in the terrace. Mm -hmm. um, so to Venba, like immigration was very um, suffocating. Um, so, and it, it's, uh, and that's exactly what we wanted to show. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, good talk. Um, I do uh, games that uh, has a focus on the African diaspora. So a lot of the creative uh, <laughs> challenges, I very much understand. Um, one of the things that I've struggled with uh, recently over the past couple of years is uh, sourcing, uh, the wanting to, the, the things that you kind of mentioned, uh, wanting to show and make sure people kind of get an understanding of 
certain aspects and details, the aspect of they'll miss things, but you know, is it okay if they miss this thing or will they get it later? Um, and of course, a lot of big titles do a lot of lore yeah. stuff to fill in those gaps. Yeah. For a small project like this, in that, in that way, in your creative decisions, you know, um, going forward, would you still kind of do something similar or would you find, think, think it would be valuable to find ways to provide that kind of inspiration or sourcing maybe outside of the core experience? You know yeah, I see. Um, you're saying like as the project gets bigger, it's hard to let more things be missed, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so I don't know. So sometimes I think about uh, anime uh, and um, when I started watching anime, I had no idea uh, what was going on. Like they were just so... Um, authentic and people they didn't make it for us they made it for themselves right uh, but we put up with that right like we would we would look up everything I would go to the wiki pages and like what does that mean what does this mean um, so if they can do that like for me um, that's what I wanted to do with Venba is like get like if I read I don't know like a manga about Go now I want to play Go <laughs> or if like even if there's like oh uh, if they show like a very small thing in one chapter I'm like what is that I want to when I go to Japan, I want to go see it, right? Um, and what's funny is that uh, for some reason, Venba is doing really well in Japan. Um, and even though, like, we ran out of budget and we couldn't lo localize it, uh, but people are literally taking screenshots uh, to translate it themselves with Google Translate. Um, and they're like, oh, this dish, I'm going to go cook it. I don't quite understand it, but I'm going to find the ingredients. So they're doing uh, that. I'm really, really happy about that. So I think, um, like, your passion for whatever you want to show is organic. Um, you trying to make it accessible to them is inorganic. And I think as long as we stay organic, it will, it will shine through for the people who want to engage with it. Mm -hmm. I feel, appreciate it. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Uh, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for coming.